Hello, this is Brother Adam from eLearning Brothers. Today we're going to talk about how to get your objects moving using Captivate 9 and Motion Paths. And so we're going to go ahead and start with that. So you see that I've got a stage here set, a slideshow, just let's fly away. I've downloaded a, a cloudy sky background and I've just made that on my master slide. And so I come in here and I look at this slide and I've got, I've also brought in some airplane figures and we're just going to make these airplane figures move. And so the first thing you do obviously is you need to have an object on the stage. You can't just have a stage. It's, um, those are transitions. Those are different effects, but we're going to go to, and let's select this one on the right here and we select it and make sure your properties window is open. And then you select the timing and you can see here and we'll sort of work from the bottom of this window to the top. Um, but you see that there's no transition. This is talking primarily about the slides. But then next up is your animations window. And there are all kinds of different animations. By default, it goes to the basic. And you can see some of these. And as you roll, hover over them, it'll show you what it's going to do. We're not going to focus on the animations today. We're going to come down to the very bottom of this drop down list and focus on the motion path. So we're going to create a motion path. And like the, like the animations, some of these, when I hover over them, it will show me what they're going to do. For today, we're going to focus on, and you can click this and put it in, and it will show you the path that's going to move. If I want to go uh, left to right, for instance, I could click that or hover over that. You see this little uh, right-facing arrow here is, high, is black, which means I can click on it to get more. So I could go right to left, and so I can put that one in. And you notice here it draws the green arrow pointing in the direction it's moving towards the red square. The end point is always the center of the object. So if I want this whole thing to move all the way across, I'm going to click and drag. And when I hold shift, one of the things that can do is make sure that my line stays straight. If I drag without holding shift, I can go in any, any angle, but if I hold shift, then it, it springs back. So I want to get this end point about as, you know, far enough off of the stage, if I want it to disappear, that the plane will, will disappear there when it's, um, when it flies off. So I've got that and now it shows me the, what it's going to do. Okay. And now if I say, I want that to be a little slower. So I come in here and then maybe I can say five seconds. And I can see how that's going to work. So then I can go up here. If you scroll up to the top under this effects panel, it's a self time based animation. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but there's a little play button here and I can click that play button and it will show me how long it takes for five seconds to get across one, two, three, four. And it's not quite long enough for it because the slide is only you know, a few seconds long. So let's lengthen the slide. And if I say show for the rest of the slide, then it goes across and it makes it. So you have to make sure not only that your motion path has a duration long enough, but that it's but that it's going to, the slide is long enough and, and, and it's going to display for the rest of the slide. So the timing you want it to display for the rest of the slide up here at the top, down here at the bottom is where you set how long you want it to, how long you want it to last. You can also do that when you want it to start. Like I could say, I want this to start two seconds in. Okay, and so then I hit play down here on the timeline and it waits two seconds and then it moves. So that's how I can create a delay in there. So remember that the green is your start, the red is your end point. Now if I wanted to, didn't want to do that to where, you know, maybe it's, I've got this one that I want to be self-timed and now I want to go in and do this one. And this one, I want to fly at kind of an angle. And so I go to motion paths and I can see that there's not really one there's left to right and there's shapes and different things and right to left. And there's curves, you know, if I do a turn, 
right? It goes up and sort of curves around, but there's not really an angle. And so I'm going to choose a custom line. And then what that does is that lets me draw my own line. And so I can click on the plane and I come out here where I want it to end. And you notice if I click, it will give me several points. And then when I want to end it, I can double click. Now, if I don't want that, I come up here to the trash can on the motion path and I click discard and I make sure that the custom lines are selected. If, okay. So I click that one and I discard that one. All right. But now if I want to just draw that motion path to where it's just going to fly kind of at the angle it's flying and come out here, and then I come out here and I double click and I get an end point. Now you notice that it's showing the motion path. That's because this down here at the bottom, the show hide motion path is enabled. If that starts to get cluttered, maybe you got a lot of motion paths and you don't want to see them. You've got them set where you want them. You can turn that off and you can turn it off for each object. Okay. So maybe, you know what I say, I've got this plane on the right set where I want it to go. Uh, and I want to turn it off and I want to go to this guy and, and, you know, turn him on or off so that I can see where they go. Okay. So now I can test this guy by going up here and saying, okay, start. And sure enough, he gets all the way off the slide. And maybe I want him to fly a little faster because he's a different, you know, bigger plane. And so then I say, you know, let's make him one second. And now I can come back up and I can either use this play button or I can come down here to the play bar or the timeline, excuse me, and click the play button there. And then I, whoo, there he goes and he's gone. Then the other one comes across. The other thing I can do, and we'll do work with this right one now, let's just add a basic motion path that's left to right, and we'll take him all the way across as well. And I want him to start want him to start, you know, about three seconds in. So I'll take that and I'll grab it and I'll say three seconds in. Okay. And his motion path appears there. Uh, we're going to say, we want it to be, let's say, we'll say a four second duration. So now I can preview this slide. And we go out and we watch the big guy go. And here comes this one. And there goes that one. Okay, and so they pass. And you notice they sort of came came together at the at the same time. So I can I can trigger that with the various timings. I can delay when they go. But let's say I want this one on the right. Let's say I also want him to kind of fade out as he gets across. So that's an animation, and there's a whole nother video we can talk about animations and such. But for this one, we'll just do a quick, we'll add an animation and we'll just call it an exit animation. And we will go alphabetically to faded out zoom. So we've applied this faded zoom and we want it to start zero seconds into the transition, but maybe I say, I want it to start about one and a half seconds after it appears on the slide. So it appears at three seconds and I want to start here at about four and a half seconds. So let's play that. We see that plane go, that plane goes, this one goes, and then it starts to fade out as it disappears. So I can apply two motion paths or two animations to one object. Now, what I want to do is I want to say this guy, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to delete this motion path. Because what I want to do is I want to do something different. I'm going to create a button. So I'm going to insert a shape. I'm going to say, just call it, you know, let's fly. Okay. 
Okay, and we'll add some properties to that button. So we'll use it as a button. Maybe bump up the text a little bit to about 28 or so. Okay. And now I want to go to the actions on that button. And I say on success, I want it to apply an effect. So I want to apply an effect to image six, which is this guy. And the effect I want, and I click the little FX button. Then I come over here and I do the same thing I did before. And I did motion path and I do custom lines and I take the arrow and I drag it over here, double click. And now you see up here that this is the triggered by smart shape two on success. It's not a self time based animation. All right. So now I've got this, this all set. I've got, we're going to preview it. So I have my, triggered animation with the button, and I have my self-timed animations with the two small planes. So let's preview this slide. And we see the little ones fly automatically. And then at any time I can click this and here goes the big one. And then that's it. So that's how you use motion paths. There's a lot you can do. You can do circles and, and pentagons and things like that, like I said, rectangles, all of those you can do. And it's all of those are based on a particular object. You can have multiple motion paths on or multiple animations on one. You can choose how they start and end and so forth. So get out there and get moving and get your objects moving on Captivate. Have a great day. We'll see you.